So today we're going to look at Lesson 7-6, Natural Logs. So a logarithmic function with base e is your natural log. There's no, not a whole lot of difference between a regular log and a natural log. Just the natural log looks like this. It's ln of x. Um, and it's the same thing as the log base e of x. It's also the inverse of y equals e to the x. So if we took this and convert it to exponential form, the base here, you don't see it as e, so it'd be e, um, well, it'd be e to the y equals x, but remember with the inverse, you switch the x and the y. Alrighty, so um, the properties of natural logs are the same as the properties for regular logs. So for your product property, if you multiply two things in the argument of that natural log, then you're going to add them. If you divide them, you're going to subtract them. And if you have the argument raised to the power, that power gets looped in front. And then um, your change of base is also the same. And of course, we would use um, just the regular log. And you take the natural log divided by the regular log. And of course, the base of that natural log, this would be an E. But you ought to be able to put this in your calculator, so it shouldn't be an issue. You should not need to use a change of base in um, your calculator anyway. Okay, so let's go ahead and just graph and see that the natural log really is not that much different than a regular log. So if y equals e to the x is the inverse of our log, and we're trying to graph our log, we're going to start off with graphing y equals e to the x and that's going to give me the following xy table. I'm going to do it sideways to save some room. So if I let x equals 0 and I'm just taking e and raising it to the x power um, so e to the 0 power is 1 and if I raise e to the first power, it's 2.7. And if I raise e to the second power, I get 7.4. So I'm going to plot those points. Right about there. And right about here. And of course, we still have, um, I'm not going to put it in here, but we have the horizontal asymptote here because it's an exponential growth function. But I'm not going to put it in there because it'll get messed up with the vertical asymptote, but just know that it is there. And of course, I'm going to connect those, and it's going to approach that x-axis as the horizontal asymptote. So this is our y equals e to the x. So then, if I want to graph the natural log of that, I'm going to take this function and I'm going to put it into log form. So I'm just going to take the log, natural log, which is base e. So natural log, which is base e, and we don't normally write it there, but I'm going to write it for our purposes here, and then these are going to switch. So of x, oh, nope of x, of y, see I knew I was wrong, of y, it's because I'm looking at it backwards from what I normally do, of y <laughs> equals x. And essentially what's going to change is these are all going to reverse, because remember these are inverses of each other. So I'm just going to switch these around. And so when x, well when y is 0, when y is 0, x will be 1. When y is 1, x will be 2.7. And when y is 2, x will be 7.4. So I'm going to plot those. And I think I will use pink. So I've got 1, 0 and then 2.7, 1, 1.7, then 
we like right about here. And of course, we've got this as our vertical asymptote. And then I'm going to put a yellow line through here. And there you go. And of course, these are um, reflected because they're inverses of each other over that y equals x line. And so they should fold right on, a t on top of each other. All right, so let's do some problems related to natural logs. You're going to find that they're identical to the ones to regular logs. So I'm just going to zip through these pretty quickly. So we're going to simplify these. The natural log of 1, you're going to start to get used to knowing what the natural log of 1 is. So because this is a base of e, and I'm going to let it equal x, we are going to put into exponential form. So e to the x is equal to 1. Well, what value would x have to be for an exponential value to be 1? Remember, any exponent or any base raised to an exponent of 0 is always 1, so x would have to be 0. So a shortcut's almost like adding a property to this, is anytime you have the natural log of 1, it's going to equal 0. And that's our key point. I forgot to mention on our graph previously. All right, so then B, we're going to convert this. So again, this is base E to the E. We can actually use our properties for this. Remember, any time that these match, then this exponent here is going to be our answer. So this is just going to be 8, mostly because, remember, this loops in front. And natural log of e, base e of e, is 1, so 1 times 8 is 8. So what's the natural log of e? Well, same thing. If it's got a common base, it cancels to give you 1. So for this one, in order to figure out um, how to solve this, remember if it's not equal to anything, you want to set it equal to x. And then before I can put this into any kind of exponential form, I have to have the log by itself. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x, and x by 6. So I end up with natural log base e of e to the third is equal to 6x. Well, we know that this value right here is going to become 1, and so my left side is going to become 3. So I've got 3 is equal to 6x, and then of course divide by 6, and so doesn't x equal one half. Then for A, we're going to use our properties and compress. So we're going to start off by looping anything that looks like a coefficient in front up to an exponent. So I've got natural log of 7 plus natural log of 5 squared. Natural log of 7 plus natural log 5 squared is 25. Since those are being added, I'm going to multiply those. And so I get natural log of 175. And of course, you can pause the video at any time because all of this you should know how to do for the most part um, because not much is different from a regular log. So feel free to pause the video and then you can check your answers as you go. All right, so for here, we're gonna loop this up and loop this up, but remember you're raising all of that to that second power. So we get natural log of x to the third minus natural log if I, well, I'm gonna write it this way, 2x squared. So I get natural log of x to the third minus the natural log of 4x squared, because the 2 gets squared as well. Because we're being subtracted, we are going to divide. So I've got x cubed divided by 4x squared. And then, of course, the x squared cancels in here twice. And I have a final answer of natural log of x over 4.
for C, I'm going to distribute the one-third to both logs. And so I have one-third natural log of x. Actually, you know what, let me backtrack this because a quicker, I guess it doesn't really matter, but you might want to combine these as multiplication before just looping that one-third. So let's go ahead and do that first. So one-third of the natural log, and I'm going to multiply the 8 times the x, so I get 8x minus, and I'm going to go ahead and loop this up here. So natural log of y to the fourth so then this gets looped up here, and so I'm going to take basically one-third as a cube root. So we will have, and I'm not going to relieve an exponent that's a fraction. So I've got the natural log, the cube root of 8, because that's what one-third is, is a cube root, is 2. And I can't take the cube root of x, so I'm going to write it as cube root of x minus the natural log of y to the fourth. So because I'm, I'm subtracting, I'm going to divide. So natural log of 2 cube root of x all over y to the fourth. That was a fun one. Yay. All right, so for this one, loop the 3 up, loop the 2 up, and we get natural log of e to the third plus natural log of x squared plus natural log of y. Well, remember that this has a base of e, so the whole value of, of this one here is going to become 3. Um, however, if we allow it to become 3, then your answer is going to be slightly different. So, I mean, I guess you could have two different answers, but they do want it written as one log. So we won't be able to write it as one log if you convert the natural log of e to the third to three. So for our purposes here, we're not gonna do that. Oops, I wanted to erase that. So instead, because they're all being added, we're gonna multiply these three together as one, and we're gonna write it as natural log of e to the third, x squared, y. That way you get it all as one log. All right, question four, part A, solve. So all we have to do is take this and put it into exponential form. So this is a base of e. So we have e squared is equal to x. And then you are going to have to use your calculator and so x is approximately equal to, oh, that's a terrible 7, equal to 7.389. And then for b, normally I would just convert this to exponential form right now, but this too is going to create an issue later on. So actually if we loop it in front, we can get rid of that exponent by looping it in front here. And so we'll get a 2 in front of the natural log of 3x plus 5 equals 4. Then we can get rid of that 2 by dividing both sides by 2. And so you have the natural log of 3x plus 5 is equal to 2. Then you can realize that, okay, the base is e. So then I can put it into exponential form. e to the second is equal to 3x plus 5. And I'm going to flip this around and subtract 5. So 3x is equal to e to the second minus 5. So again, I switched these around and then subtracted 5 at the same time. And then finally, you're going to divide by 3 to get your answer, and you will have to use your calculator. So x is approximately equal to 0 0.7964. I'm going to check little Miss Jean Adams' work here. e to the second minus 5 
divided by three. Ah, Jean Adams is correct. Good for her. <laughs> All right, next page. Okay, so for C, I don't even need that much room, so I'm gonna zoom in for you. Okay. So first we want to compress these into one log. Right here, so since they're being added, we're gonna multiply them. So natural log of three times two x is equal to two. So you get natural log of six x is equal to two. So our base is E. So I have e to the second is equal to 6x. Divide both sides by 6. x is going to approximately equal e to the second. Divided by 6 is going to be about 1.232. Uh, and I rounded that. So the, if, if you're asked for the exact answer, this right here is the exact answer. So if I were doing this on a non-calc portion of the test, this would be the exact answer, and this would be the approximate answer. Just to let you know. All right, let's look at example five, part A. So we're gonna solve each equation. Remember, you have to check your answer to make sure that it works and I you know I actually didn't stress that in um, the previous section but don't forget that you have to take your answer and plug it back in to the argument of the log to make sure that that argument is not does not become negative or zero all right so here we go so I'm going to start off with um, subtracting three from both sides And so then I get 2e to the negative x is equal to 22 divide by 2. e to the negative x is equal to 11. Then I'm going to convert this to log form. So natural log base e of 11 is equal to negative x. And of course we want to multiply this by a negative one or divide by a negative one and multiply this by a negative one. So that means that x is going to be approximately negative natural log of 11. No, remember you don't have to put that base at the end. And we get approximately negative 2.39 8 if I round to three places. And then for B, uh, and, and let me just go back here and emphasize again something else. You want to make sure that you're getting this exponential part, the base of the exponent, alone. So you have to isolate this. So that's why we have to subtract the 3 and divide by 2. Well, on B, the exponential part here is by itself. So we don't have to do anything but put it into log form. So natural log base e of 12 is equal to x minus 2. So then I'm going to add 2 to both sides and I'm going to flip at the same time. I can't stand to have my x on the left. So x is going to equal the natural log of 12. I just drop the base of e and I'm adding 2. So that's your exact answer, but I'm going to use my calculator to find the approximated answer. And I get x approximately equal to 4.485 e. So we have to isolate that exponent, that exponential part. So we've got to subtract 5. So we get e to the 3x is equal to 10. Then we can put it into log form. 
natural log base e of 10 is equal to 3x. All right, to solve for x, we're going to divide both sides by 3. So this right here is the exact answer. And so then x is approximately equal to natural log of 10 divided by, well, let's see. divided by 3. So I get x is approximately equal to 0 0.768, if you round correctly. All right, last page. You thought you could get away with not doing word problems? I think not. OK. Oops. Erase that. Okay, so here they've given you a formula and it models the number of hours it takes a bacteria culture to decay. Where H right here is the number of hours, R is the rate of decay, so there's your rate of decay there. P is your initial bacterial population, so right here. And A is the reduced bacteria population right here. So in part A, it says a scientist determines that some antibiotic decays a population of 18,000 bacteria to 4,200 in 24 hours. Find the rate of decay caused by the antibiotic. So we're going to list out what we're going to plug in for what. So our H is going to be the 24 hours. So right there, our um, R, we don't know, because that's what we're trying to find is the rate of decay. So R is our unknown. And then P is our initial um, population. So that's going to be your 18,000. And then get a different color. A is going to equal our decayed population, which was 4,200. So those are the values I'm going to put in. So I've got 24 equals 1 over R times the natural log of 18,000. minus the natural log of 4,200 and then we're just going to solve from there. So I get, I'm just going to take the natural log, now I'm not going to round on my calculator but you'll see me rounding on paper. So the natural log of 18,000 minus the natural log of 4,200 is approximately, so I get 24 is equal to 1 over R times, and now I'm approximating this on paper. And it just keeps going. Okay, then um, I'm going to divide that into the 24. So I'm going to divide all of this by that big number, and you can just use your second negative to get the previous answer. So I'm doing that to both sides. So I'm going to take 24 divided by a second negative to get that answer, and I get um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I get 16.4915.89 da, 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 equals 1 over R. So I'm going to put this over 1. I'm going to cross multiply and solve. And I get R, well I get that 16R, and I'm just going to abbreviate that as equal to 1. And so then R is equal to 
let's take this and put it under one. Da -da -da -da. So all right. So if I take and I divide both sides by that long 16 point blah blah blah. And I really, to be honest, used my x to the negative 1 button on my calculator. Um, you get r is approximately equal to, so I'll make that squiggly, 0 0.0606, and it keeps going. So that is your rate of decay. But that's in, um, DK, but that's in um, decimal form. So the actual rate, so I'm going to write this off here to the side, make it red. So therefore, the rate of decay is about, and if I move this two places to the right, I get 6.06%. All right, so then part B, a laboratory assistant tests an antibiotic that causes a rate of decline of 0.16. So that's your rate. So R is equal to 0 0.16, okay? And they gave that, that's interesting. That they gave that to us in decimal form because they didn't put a percent at the end of it. So the question is how long should it take? So how long? That's my unknown. That's my question. So our H's are unknown. Should it take for a population of 5,000 bacteria? So that's our original P. To shrink get a better color, to shrink to 400. So that is going to be our A. Okay, so let's put those in. So I have H is equal to 1 over 0 0.16 times the natural log of 5,000 minus the natural log of 400. All right, so the natural log of 5,000 minus the natural log of 400 is, okay, so I've got H equals and again, I'm rounding on paper, but not in my calculator. And then I'm going to divide that, which is multiplying by 1 over 0 0.6, but I'm really going to divide by 0 0.16. And so H ends up being approximately 15.785. Eight hours. So if you take this part, so I'm going to subtract 15 from my answer, I'm going to take that part and multiply it by 60 for 60 minutes, you get 47 minutes. Okay? So therefore, because we don't speak in, I'll see you in 15.78 hours. So therefore the population will shrink to 400 bacteria after 15 hours, and we should put after about 
15 hours, 48 minutes. Wasn't that fun? All right, we are done. Good luck with your homework. Ask me any questions.